What's up, what's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Morgan, a second year medical student in New York City, and we are back with our second rotation recap of my second year of medical school, which also happens to be my clerkship year. <laughs> five weeks I've been on my psychiatry rotation so I just want to do another rotation recap just like I did for surgery and so the first thing that we're going to dive into is my rotation schedule so this was a lot calmer than surgery because I didn't have a lot going on it was also a lot shorter because it was five weeks so um, I really like that we were at one site for the whole time so I was actually on our medicine psychiatry floor so essentially this is the floor for patients that have psychiatric illnesses or like psychiatric concerns but also have complex medical conditions so we had a lot of patients that um were coming from ortho or trauma and some weren't weight bearing and they needed wheelchairs so they needed a lot of pgot or people that were getting IV fluids or steroids on the unit which for a lot of psychiatric floors they're like very strict like you don't even have beds that can move between the unit and it's really hard for them to do like IVs blood work different things like that so I thought it was really interesting especially because I'm interested in medicine or family medicine um to have that overlap between psychiatry and medicine that was pretty much what I did my outpatient for five weeks so my schedule looked like sleeping in which was so much more so much better compared to surgery so i would usually wake up at like 8 8 30 um i had to be there around 9 to 9 15 so i could chart check for my patients and then rounds start at 9 30 um usually la rounds would be like 45 minutes to an hour so about 10 30 i would go and see my patients that would take maybe an hour and then I would write notes, do lunch, and then we would regroup with our preceptors in the afternoon or around like three o'clock to run the list, which is basically just talking about your patients again and like the to do. So right after rounds, we'd run the list. Um, so like what are the to do's for the patients in the afternoon? Run the list. So what did we actually accomplish on those to do's or what needs to be pushed over to the next day? Um, then I was usually going home like around 4.30, if not earlier. So it was beautiful. Um, and then one afternoon a week I had outpatient and so I was actually at a private practice where they did TMS which is transcranial magnetic stimulation which is like treatment for depression um, and then esketamine therapy which is treatment for like depression and like also looking into like if it can be treatment for suicidal ideation so that was really cool. Um, I feel like I saw so many different patients when I was on my inpatient and also on my outpatient. I was able to see, of course, a lot of psychosis since I was inpatient, um, but also some depression, schizophrenia. It was really awesome. So I overall like had a great time. Um, I really loved the schedule of having the shorter hours and I did have like a good bit of downtime. So I was able to oftentimes get my U-World and my Anki done, which was beautiful. A little bit about how I liked the rotation. I will say that this was a tough one for me because I was not expecting to like, like surgery. I put surgery on my first rotation as my first rotation because I was like, let's just get it over with. And then I honestly really enjoyed like the immediate gratification that you get of like you go in there and when you come out a couple of hours later, like someone is fixed. Um, and I think psychiatry is a lot different, especially on my unit. Like we had one patient that had been on the unit for a whole year. A lot of patients, like they're coming in for months at a time. It's not just like a quick week long or, you know, a couple day hospital stay. And so I think that was really hard, you know, like waiting out to see if someone is going to get better when you give them different medications and having to like trial and error or figure out what you're going to do about the side effects and all of that good jazz. Um, so that was really, really tough. But one thing that I did love was realizing like you can't have longitudinal relationships with patients because I've always thought like, oh, I want to go family medicine and I want to do outpatient because I really want to have these like long relationships with my patients. But I realized that, like I said, there was a patient that's been in there for a year. Like we've had patients that were in there for a couple months or we also have a lot of like repeat patients, which is really unfortunate. Um, but 
when they would come back like oh I automatically recognize that name the attendings would say so I think it's like you also can like build longitudinal relationships with patients um in the inpatient setting so I really liked that but I think there's definitely a lot of like questioning my role in medicine I knew clerkship year would be tough but I feel like this is like again the first time that I'm envisioning myself as a medical provider um and taking autonomy over my patient's care so it's not just like I'm a bystander I'm like you are making these decisions even though like the resident and the attending are of course like okaying them um but there's things that we do like treatment over objection which is basically taking a patient to court and saying they lack decisional making capacity so we're going to give them these medications or and if they don't take them orally then you give them IM like you hold them down to give them their medications or sedate them uh, medically or physically restrain them um, and then also you can say like the patient doesn't have decisional making capacity to leave the hospital so we're going to hold them for this many days um, and for the most part like I think that it was warranted um, in these situations because you do have a lot of patients who are unable to care for themselves or a danger to themselves or a danger to the community but there are definitely some like iffy situations um where it was just tough to to think about like that we have that much control over someone's life and kind of like taking away their autonomy even if we ultimately decided they don't have the capacity to like make their own decisions um so that was really really difficult and then also just like also realizing that there's so many systemic inequities, so many um, that contribute to mental health, mental illness, um, and like just like inability for people to get care for their mental illness. And so I think that was also tough. Just like there's inequities at the population level, but then there's also also inequities in the healthcare system itself. And so then it's like, okay, if I'm going into medicine, am I also like perpetuating those inequities being a provider in the system I don't know um but also like there were so many times where I was also reminded of on the opposite hand like why I started medicine in the first place um we had a patient that when I first started on the unit they had already been there for a while but very very internally preoccupied um basically having a lot of hallucinations and was essentially bed bound because of these hallucinations and was really like difficult to even have a conversation with them they didn't even realize that they were on the psychiatric unit um and then by the end this person was walking this patient was able to articulate like what led to their hospital stay and that they and recognize that they were having hallucinations and that those were not real voices that they were hearing or not real people that they were seeing um so that was really really exciting just to see like the change in someone um once we were able to like get them stabilized and back on their medication um and i think like i just really love building relationships with my patients like there are definitely some patients that i will never forget um from this rotation but overall i think it's like it's just growing pains of realizing like what is my role in medicine what kind of provider do i want to be but um it's tough but there, it's always like incredibly rewarding now we're going to transition a little bit to like tips for you guys so studying for the shelf how did i study for the shelf i don't have my score back if i have my score back by the time that this video posts i will make sure to include it on the screen if not then i will put it in the description whenever i get it but um pretty similarly to how i studied for the surgery shelf and i think this is going to be my plan for all of the shelf exams so there were 944 Anki cards for the surgery shelf. So it basically goes like, if you search by tag, you go Anking deck, and then you go by step two, and then you go by shelf exams, and then whatever rotation into so like psychiatry. And then there's like no dupes, and then there's only step two. So like no dupes is just like no duplicate cards, but it includes step one and step two stuff. And then only step two is like gets rid of all the step one content. So I elected to do the no do so I could see a lot of the step one and the step two content because um I just felt like wow it was like the step two mostly focused on like treatment management but I was kind of like forgetting what are the different classifications for diseases and like what are the different um defense mechanisms what's the difference between postpartum depression versus postpartum blues like all that good jazz and so that's in a lot of the step one content um and so I just decided to do those I did about 40 cards daily. Um, I had a lot going on during the psychiatry rotation personally. Um, you should watch my week in the life so you can see about that. But that ultimately meant like I just didn't finish all the cards. I'd probably say I got through like 600 or 700 cards. Um, and I still felt like very prepared for the shelf. 
uh, my school also had like their own Anki deck because during our rotation we had to do a psycho farm quiz which was like super intense like knowing all the different like <clears throat> psychiatric medications and their mechanism of actions and their indications blah, 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 blah. so therefore um that deck had like 600 cards so I did those cards as well so I felt like overall um I got a lot of exposure to what I needed via Anki um and then there were 367 new world questions so I did all the new world questions um, and I did about like 20 questions daily um I really like to take a practice exam like the weekend our shelf exams are on Friday so I like to take like Saturday or Sunday to take a practice exam um so I can kind of like see where I'm at but also didn't have time to do that with everything else that was going on and so I just did like a practice exam the night before I did the form seven if you go on like the NBME website the self-assessments that they have for every rotation um they're like 20 bucks so a really good investment so I did form seven um I did fine on that and so I was like okay cool we're gonna roll with it um so I think I did like fine and then also my school our shelf exams only count for like 10% of our grades so it was like a little bit less on my radar in terms of like our quiz that was like the psycho farm quiz that was like 20 percent of our grader off that was 15 percent but tldr anki u world and then ambles also has some like really good study planes if you don't want to like invest in u world but i absolutely love u world i love their tables and they're just beautiful so the last thing that we're going to talk about are tips for the psychiatry rotation. Um, so of course I don't have like my official final feedback back because that takes forever for them to get. But I did mid rotation feedback with my resident and then I did final rotation feedback with my attending and they only had good things to say. It was really nice. Um, and so that was exciting. So I just wanted to share some tips now that I've gone through the rotation. So the first thing is to set expectations. This is always going to be like the number one tip. So do you need to pre-round on your patients in person or do you just need to pre-chart do you see patients together with someone are you allowed to see patients on your own um are there going to be like ways to see if patients have had any like behavioral concerns or things like that that you need to be aware of are you writing your own notes who needs to co-sign your notes who needs to attest your notes those are all things like i would sit down on day one with whoever your direct preceptor is and like set those expectations so you know what you need to do second prepare yourself by learning the common mnemonics so you want to be able to understand like bipolar versus just depression um versus schizophrenia like humanic episode different things like that so my favorite mnemonics the first one is dig fast um and so this is going to be for an episode of mania so it stands for distractibility impulsivity grandiosity y'all i'm doing this from memory flight of ideas agitation sleeplessness and talkative talkativeness or mania and then like you I think it's like a mania you need to be like greater than one week usually like hospitalized in pairs you're like going to work and school and different things like that versus hypomania you still have like these symptoms but um you wouldn't need to be hospitalized it's gonna be like four days or less so different little things like that and then also sig e caps um that is for major depressive disorder so sleep interest guilt energy concentration appetite psychomotor changes um it could be retardation or stimulation um and then suicidal ideation so that is that and then avh is another common acronym that you see which just stands for auto visual hallucinations um which is how we usually like screen for psychosis so those are the mnemonics that i highly recommend learning Next thing, make sure that you learn how to do a mental status exam. I'm sure you'll have exposure on the unit, but I think just like familiarizing yourself with the order of like appearance, behavior, motor, um, what's the difference between mood and affect, what's the difference between judgment versus insight, those kind of things. And then just like seeing how you can assess for that versus like in co cognition, how can you assess, how can you assess um, alert versus orientation, um, what's a and o times three versus a and o times four um like serial seven spell world backwards um so i think just like you can just google examples of that or the first aid book for the psychiatry rotation um is awesome so just make sure you're familiar with how to do a mental status exam and also how to document that because you'll probably have to do it in your notes we had to document it for every time that we saw a patient if you're on the rotation make sure that you know your patients um that was one of the things that i recommended on was like you always know your patient you try to like know your patients better than anyone else and i think that's so important because you have to think like you're only following well we only followed like two to three patients versus like the attending they had 
you know every patient on the unit and so if there was ever a discrepancy on rounds or they're like has this patient gotten their chest x-ray I'm like yep got their chest x-ray here are the results you know that kind of thing because I have more time so when you're first seeing a patient or when there's a new patient coming in just like chart review I usually like to see like if they came in via the ED what was that um initial intake note there um and then seeing if they had any past hospitalizations looking at those um just looking at the discharge summaries and then of course like if they've been on our unit like every day I'm checking the nurses note or any other providers that saw them like PT nutrition different things like that um I think this is really important because like you know you have someone come in with a major depressive episode and you're going to start treating them with an SSRI no because if they have a history of mania then technically they have bipolar and the last thing that you want to do is give them an SSRI so just like different things like that um and then also understanding like their social history um do they have family that they might want you to contact and different things like that and then also just like being very comfortable talking to people because there's a lot of like history gathering and collaterals especially if you're in the intake setting um so collaterals just basically like um other providers family members like they're if they have like act team which is like a sort of community treatment team or an imt team um just making sure that you contact them um and so like you have to get of course permission from the patient um if you're just like in the general inpatient setting and not in a acute emergent setting um but just like being comfortable with documenting that and knowing what questions to ask um, and then just like making sure you get the most information possible so that way you can take care of your patient and share that with the team. And then the last thing for like honestly any rotation but I think it was emphasized to us in psych so I want to emphasize it to you guys. It's just like knowing safety tips so different things of my patients like I was we only had like one patient that was kind of like oh my god what are you gonna do um, and I think it's just because he didn't want to be there and so he's just like acting out but um, I think that it's really hard with mental illness and like especially like, these people are not like oriented to reality and like we had a patient that thought that like the spirits were trying to get her and so the spirits were going to take over us and like use us as an avenue and so like she thought that we were trying to poison her and different things like that and so just like safety things in terms of um you know like not seeing patients that are safety concerned with the door closed making sure that you're like if you know like them you the door so like they're not blocking your access out um a lot of these units are locked units so just making sure when, if you have keys to access the unit that you're like shutting the door behind you not just like letting random people in overall like i never felt like really unsafe and like hopefully your school or wherever you're rotating at will make sure that you don't feel unsafe um but i think it's just like these little things that you can do just to make sure just to like keep yourself extra safe but other than that i think that's it that was a little bit about my experience on my psychiatry rotation tips for you guys. If you have any questions, um, make sure to drop those in the comments below and I will respond. And also make sure that you check out my week in the life video for my psychiatry rotation just so you can kind of see like that daily schedule in action. Next up for me is going to be neurology. So of course there'll be a week in the life coming out and there'll be a rotation recap once I do that. But until then, Make sure to subscribe, like this video, comment if you have any questions, and I will see you guys next time.